while you prepare a cup of coffee for your friend if main ingredients like the milk water sugar and coffee powder are not in correct ratio your coffee is tasteless isn't it the result of the division of two quantities expressed in the same units is called the ratio of those two quantities ratio consists of two terms the antecedent and consequent if a and b are two numbers the ratio of a and b is expressed as a is to b and is also written as a by b a is known as the antecedent and b is known as consequent that is the numerator is called the antecedent and the denominator is called the consequent for example the ratio between blue balls and the yellow balls in this bag is 3 is to 2 that is there are 3 blue balls and 2 yellow balls the 1 is to 1 ratio of milk and water makes 2 cups of tea do you know what is an inverse ratio and a compound ratio no <laughs> okay i'll explain them to you if a and b are two numbers then the inverse ratio of a is to b is b is to a and if p q r s are four numbers then the compound ratio of p is to q and r is to s is p r is to q s usually we check and note the expenditure of our family in comparison with the income of our family this kind of comparison of income and expenditure helps us improve our savings quantitatively let us watch this example annual incomes of the families of sita and geeta are in the ratio of 4 is to 3 and their annual expenditures are in the ratio of 3 is to 2 what is their annual income if they save rupees 3000 in a year let the annual income of sita and geeta be x and y respectively the annual incomes are in the ratio 4 is to 3 the annual expenditures are in the ratio 3 is to 2 the amount they save from their annual income in a year is rupees 3000 so rupees 3000 by 2 is rupees 1500 therefore 4x is to 3x is to 3x is to 2x one part is equal to 1500 as we see the difference between their annual income and expenditure is rupees 1500 therefore the annual income of sita is of four parts so one part is 1500 four parts is rupees x by cross multiplying we get x is equal to 4 into 1500 therefore x is equal to rupees 6000 the annual income of geeta is of three parts one part is rupees 1500 so three parts is rupees y by cross multiplying we get y is equal to 3 into rupees 1500 therefore y is equal to rupees 4500 therefore the annual income of sita and geeta are rupees 6000 and rupees 4500 respectively sometimes we estimate the capability of a cricket player with his run rate let's see this example for your better understanding in a cricket test series the runs made by raju and tendulkar are in the ratio 5 is to 9 and tendulkar and azhar are in the ratio 6 is to 7 what are the runs made by them if azhar makes 187 runs more than raju runs made by raju and tendulkar are in the ratio 5 is to 9 runs made by tendulkar and azhar are in the ratio 6 is to 7 so 
let the runs made by Raju be x. Let the runs made by Tendulkar be y. The runs made by Azhar are 187 more than Raju. Therefore, the runs made by Azhar are 187 plus x. Solving the ratios, 5 is to 9. Multiply this by 2 and we get 10 is to 18. 6 is to 7. Multiply this with 3, we get 18 is to 21. Therefore, the compound ratio will be 10 is to 18 is to 21. Therefore, the ratios of runs made by Raju, Tendulkar and Azhar are 10 is to 18 is to 21. Ratio of Raju and Azhar are 10 by 21 is equal to x by 187 plus x. By cross multiplying we get 10 into 187 plus x is equal to 21x. Opening the brackets 1870 plus 10x is equal to 21x. So 11x is equal to 1870. x is equal to 1870 by 11 which is 170. Therefore the runs made by Raju are 170. So the runs made by Azhar which is 187 plus x will now become 187 plus 170 which is 357 runs. The total parts of Raju and Azhar is equal to 31 parts and the total runs made by Raju and Azhar are 170 plus 357 which is equal to 527. Therefore the ratio of Tendulkar to Azhar and Raju is equal to 18 by 31 which is equal to y by 527. Therefore y is equal to 18 into 527 by 31. Therefore, y is equal to 306. Therefore, the runs made by Raju, Tendulkar and Azhar are 170, 306 and 357 respectively. Well, till now we have discussed about ratios. Now let's discuss about proportion. What does proportion mean? Anyone? The equality of two ratios is called a proportion. Let's take a look. Let A, B, C and D be four numbers. If A is to B is equal to C is to D, then A, B, C and D are in proportion. The terms at the extremes in a proportion are called the extremes and the two terms in the middle are called means. So A is to B is equal to C is to D. The product of extremes is equal to the product of means. A into D is equal to B into C. Now let us move to the different types of proportions. Proportions are categorized into three types. Direct proportion, inverse proportion and compound proportion. Let us begin with direct proportion first. If two quantities are so related that an increase or decrease in one causes a corresponding increase or decrease in the other, then they are said to be in direct proportion or direct variation. If two quantities x and y do not change such that x is proportionate to y, uh, okay, to make this clear, let us see this example. The cost of each book is rupees 10. A man buys three such books. Then what is the cost of these three books? Let the total cost of the three books be x. The cost of each book is rupees 10. One book is rupees 10. So three books is x. By cross multiplying we get x is equal to 3 into 10 by 1 which is equal to 30. Therefore 
x is equal to rupees 30. Therefore, we can say that books are directly proportional to price. Now, to understand direct proportion more clearly, let us observe this example, which is in a tabular form. Here we can see that the man is weighing sugar of 1 kg, which costs rupees 18. Now he wants to weigh the sugar of 3 kgs. Then what will he do? Then to know the cost of 3 kgs sugar, the man simply multiplies the cost of 1 kg sugar with 3. Now the total cost is rupees 54. Similarly, he can find the cost of 5 kgs, 6 kgs, 8 kgs and so on. You can observe that as weight of the sugar increases, cost also increases in such a manner that their ratio remains constant. Now let us discuss about inverse proportion. If two quantities are so related that an increase in one causes a corresponding decrease in the other or vice versa, then they are said to be in inverse proportion or inverse variation. Let us check out this example. 36 men can do a piece of work in 12 days. In how many days can 9 men do the same? Number of days taken for 36 men to do a piece of work is 12 days. Now let the number of days for 9 men to do the same work be x days. 36 men gives 1 by 12 days, 9 men gives x days. By cross multiplying we get 36x is equal to 1 by 12 into 9 x is equal to 1 by 12 into 9 divided by 36. Therefore, x is equal to 48 days. Therefore, 9 men can do the same work in 48 days. To understand inverse proportion more clearly, let us observe this example. Ramu can go to school in four different means by foot, running, by bicycle or by car. In the first case, he can walk 3 kilometers per hour and takes 30 minutes to reach the school. In the second case, Ramu runs to school. That means he increases his speed. Now the speed becomes 3 into 2 that is 6 kilometers per hour. And here we have to observe carefully that when speed increases, automatically the time decreases. So now the time becomes 30 into 1 by 2, which is 15 minutes. Here he takes 15 minutes to reach the school. As in the third case, if Ramu goes to school by cycle, now the speed becomes 3 into 3, that is 9 kilometers per hour. At the time, and the time becomes 30 into 1 by 3, which is 10 minutes. In this case, he takes 10 minutes to reach the school. In the fourth case, if Ramu goes to school by car, then the speed becomes 3 into 15, that is 45 kilometers per hour. And so, the time becomes 30 into 1 by 15, which is 2 minutes. Here, Ramu takes 2 minutes to reach the school. So, from these 4 cases, we can observe that as speed increases, time taken to cover the same distance. And now, for the last and final installment, compound proportion. Sometimes, a change in one quantity depends upon the changes in two or more other quantities in some proportion. Let us learn this with another example. 10 men can lay a road about 75 kilometers long in 5 days. In how many days can 15 men lay a road of about 45 kilometers long? Let the number of days be x. The ratio of the number of days is equal to 5 is to x. The number of days is inversely proportionate to the number of men 
and in direct proportion to the distance. Therefore, 5 is to x is equal to 15 into 75 is to 10 into 45. So, x into 15 into 75 is equal to 5 into 10 into 45. So, x is equal to 5 into 10 into 45 by 15 into 75. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Therefore, in 2 days, 15 men can lay a road 45 kilometers long.